Wow. Heavenly Father, all glory and praise to all glory, praise and honor to you, Jesus, all glory, praise and honor to you, Holy Spirit, all praise, glory and honor to you. With a thankful heart, we gather today knowing your presence is amongst us. Holy Spirit, we are here for a reason because you have chosen us for the work of your kingdom. We are here in this session today, Lord, with our hearts, minds, and ears open for your word. Let today's teaching be extremely easy to understand. <clears throat> Let the understanding of your word change our lives so that no longer our life, it is our life, but yours. Yes, Lord. Lord, may you increase while we decrease. All about you, Lord, nothing about us. We make this prayer in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Wow, Amen. wow, Amen. wow. What Amen. just happened, God. Jacinta? What a beautiful prayer. Thank, Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Awesome. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> wow. Praise it's God. Good you, it's you good. You stirred everyone up, brother. See, this is what happens. <laughs> Praise God. Praise God. Sister Jacinta, that was wonderful. Thank you, brother. Wonderful. Wow, when, when the beautiful. Holy Spirit when the Holy Spirit stirs us up and we respond to the Holy Spirit, you know what? When we get stirred up and we respond to the Holy Spirit, I'm sure, I'm sure it's no more our words anymore. It's the words of the Holy Spirit through us, encouraging us because we are not going to worry about what others are going to say. We are just going to say what the Holy Spirit wants us to say. Amen? Amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. So the last time, my dear sisters, we learned about the challenges that we need to face when we are going to fulfill God's purpose in our life. And you know, last time as we were about to end, we went to Acts chapter 9, verse number 4. And in Acts chapter 9, verse number 4, we learned about Saul, who was on his way to Damascus, in order to persecute the Christians. You know, you know, please understand, my dear sisters, we are living today in the 21st century. And just because we are coming to Bible class, just because we are getting into our relationship with the Lord, just because we are learning the word, now that we are growing in the word, yes, there is excitement. Surely there should be excitement. If there is no excitement, we'll never be carrying forward. But because we are all excited, don't you think that everybody around us is excited? I said, just because you are excited doesn't mean that everybody around you is excited. Other people may not be excited. And with your excitement, there is enough reason for you to be discouraged. There are enough reasons for you to be damp. There are enough reasons for you to slow down. There are enough reasons for you to change track. There is enough reasons for you to even retreat. But you know, my dear sisters, when you understand that when you come closer to the Lord, when you come closer to fulfilling your purpose in life, when you come in, into, that, into that realm, that spiritual realm where you, for you, nothing else matters except doing the will of God, I tell you, the forces of darkness, the forces of, of the enemy are simply going to gang up against you. Now, the choice is whether you are going to succumb to that pressure, you are simply going to retreat, or you are going to fight it with the grace of God, you're going to fight it with the Holy Spirit. Remember, this is not a physical battle. This is a spiritual battle. And a spiritual battle is an extremely fierce battle. Let me say this again. A spiritual battle is an extremely fierce battle. And if you understand that if you don't have Christ in you, you don't, if you're not really born again, if you really don't have the Spirit of God living inside of you, you may think that the Christian life is a hundred meters dash. You will run in the beginning and eventually you will stop running because the Christian life is not a hundred meters dash. It is a marathon. It's a long haul. It's a long distance. It's, it's a whole lifetime because we must remember that the fight in, a, in the Christian life is not going to be a fight for one day, one month, 10 years, 
20 years. It's a lifelong battle that we must fight this enemy because this enemy doesn't like the children of God. He hates God and he hates everyone who belongs to God. And therefore, when you are in the process of doing what God has called you to do, you are going to face an opposition. You are going to face persecution. You are going to face discouragement. You are going to find people who are going to be used by the devil, agents of the enemy, who are going to come against you, who are going to try, to try to stop you from doing what God has called you to do. But when you understand what your purpose is, you are not going to back off. On the contrary, you are simply going to get more aggressive. You are going to fight it to, right up to the finishing line because you know to whom you belong. I said, you know to whom you belong. I don't say you belong to this world. You belong to Christ. And when you know to whom you belong, you're just not going to back off. You're going to fight harder. You're going to fight stronger because you know whom you have and you know to whom you belong. Hallelujah. Are you listening, my dear sisters? Yes. Please understand the Christian battle is not a battle that you can fight alone. You may be somebody, big person in the church. You may be a well-known preacher. You may have a lot of degrees with you to, to give you the backing. You may have the whole organization with you. But if you don't have this one person, the Holy Spirit, because you don't belong to Christ, I tell you, you'll simply quit and leave the battlefield because you'll be bruised and broken and you will never want to step onto that battlefield ever in your life. And therefore... When you and I understand who we are in Christ the day we were born again, the day we accepted Jesus, the day we were born again, the Spirit of God came and possessed us. We were the temples of the Holy Spirit. And from that day onwards, now God is fighting our battle. We don't need to fight anymore, but we need to cooperate with the Holy Spirit because when we cooperate with God's ability and our availability, the job is going to be done. I said, when you and I make ourselves available, God's ability and our availability gets us to the finishing line, helps us to fulfill the very purpose that God has called us to do. And you know, when we go to Acts chapter 9, verse number 4, it tells us that, that Saul, before he became Paul, he thought he was going to do the very purpose of God in his life. What was he doing? He was the Pharisee of Pharisees. He thought that what he was doing was the right thing. He thought that God was so pleased with him because as a Pharisee, he was upholding the law. He was doing everything what the law said. He was a, he was a fanatic to such an extent that anybody who did not follow the law, he simply would imprison them. He would, he would assassinate them. He would finish them. And he was the one who ascended. He was responsible for the first martyr in the church. Stephen, Stephen was the, was the first person who was, was, was stoned to death. And Saul was the man who actually supervised and gave orders for them to, to stone Stephen to death. So you can imagine if Stephen is the only one who's mentioned how many thousands of people Saul had murdered before he came to Christ. And in Acts chapter 9, verse number 4, while he's on his way to Damascus in order to persecute the believers, in order to persecute the Christians, He's going with only one motive. Look at, look, you must understand, this man is not a wicked man. This man is not an evil man, but he is a misguided man because he thinks by he going and persecuting the Christians, by persecuting the believers, he is pleasing God because he was a misguided Pharisee. He thought that only those who did the law were doing the right thing. And anyone who did outside the law was absolutely supposed to be an infidel. He was a person who was, was done and he wanted to exterminate those people. And as a result, when he's on his way to Damascus in Acts chapter 9, verse number 4, the word of God tells us, what does it say in Acts chapter 9, verse number 4? Has anyone got your Bibles with you? Yeah, yeah, God, brother. Acts chapter 9, verse number 4 is, in Acts chapter 9, St. Paul is on his way to Damascus. He yeah. is basically he, going to, he, sorry, what's that? Yeah. He, he fell to the ground and, and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? You know, you know, you know, my dear uh, sisters, God takes the persecution of his children personally. Mm. 
Right. God yeah. takes the persecution of his children personally. If anyone, if you are really in Christ, listen, the condition is if you are in Christ, if you really belong to Christ, you are really born again, you have the spirit of God with you. It is obvious that the, the kingdom of darkness is going to come against you. The agents of the devil are going to come against you. But when you understand that you really are with Christ and you're really going to cruise along with him, you know what is going to happen? God himself gets involved in your battle personally. God gets involved in your battle personally. Saul is going out to persecute the Christians. That's exactly what he was on his way to Damascus. Saul was now coming against whom? He was coming against Christ. And that's why he hears Christ telling him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? He doesn't mm. say, why are you persecuting the Christians? Why are you persecuting my people? Why are you persecuting the people on the way to Damascus? What are you doing? You have already killed Stephen. You have killed so many of my people. Why have you killed them? Jesus is not saying that to him. Jesus is saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me personally? And you know, my dear sisters, listen to this. The scripture in verse number nine, which we just read, it reveals to us how personally Jesus is touched by our own persecution, is touched by our own problem. You know, Saul was not directly, directly persecuting Jesus. He was persecuting the saints. He was persecuting the believers. But Jesus said, why are you persecuting me? Why are you persecuting me? And you know, my dear sisters, the last time, I remember the last time, I took you to Matthew chapter, Matthew chapter 25, I believe in verse number uh, 40 onwards. I, I, it was verse number 40. Because you know what? That, uh, Matthew chapter 25 talks about when Jesus returns the second time. And we all know, based on what the times are going on right now, what is happening in our world today, we are much closer to the end times than when Jesus wrote or when Jesus said it or when all those uh, epistles were written, all those uh, letters by St. Paul, St. John were written. They were all talking about the end is near. We are almost at the end of the days. All, all those things were said. We have we are come to the last days. All these things you read in the book of Hebrews. And when you look at uh, uh, 2021, you look at, at, at what time we are right now. We are closer to the end times. We are closer to the time of Jesus' return. Maybe we don't know the date. We don't know the month. We don't know the year. But when you look at it with respect to eternity and we look at what the word says, it, we are much closer to the day of Jesus' return than when this gospel was written. And you know, in Matthew chapter 25, can we go to verse number 40? I don't have my Bible here with me. Okay. And the king will answer them. Truly, I tell you, just as you, as you did it to the one of the least of these who are the members of my family, you did it to me. You know, my dear sisters, many people have misunderstood the scripture. They believe that because Jesus said what you did to the least of my members, they believe that, you know, they should go on the streets and whoever is least, you know, who's hungry, who's thirsty, who's got one leg, one hand, one finger, one ear, they believe they are the least. And they go there, put their hands in their pocket, they'll give them some food to eat, they'll give them some money to, uh, you know, for, for their food. And they think that this is exactly what Jesus said. Is this what he's saying? I'm asking you, Matthew chapter 25, verse number 40. Is this, what is, is this what he's saying? No. Yeah, what, what is the scripture? Matthew chapter 25, verse number 40 says. We learned in, in Acts chapter 9, verse number 4, that when, when the people of God are persecuted, Jesus takes that personally. Did we read that? Yes. When Saul was persecuting the Christians, he was persecuting the believers. Jesus simply told Paul through that voice, which he heard, he says, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Now, when we come to Matthew chapter 25, verse number 40, these are the words that Jesus is going to speak. There'll be no second chance there because he will say, what you did to the least of these members of my family, you did it to me. What was Jesus talking about here? 
because there is there is a similarity in both these verses why connected it because we are all called to do this aren't we called to do that isn't part of our plan isn't it god's plan that we are supposed to bear fruit are we not supposed supposed to you know be contributing to the family of god yes yeah so what is this verse telling us truly i tell you just as you did it to the one of the least of these you of my of my members of my family you did it to me when saul was persecuting the christians jesus said to him why are you doing it to me so jesus took that personally now jesus is coming at the end of the time he's saying what you did to the least of the members of my family you did it to me what is the difference here can, can somebody explain to me so that i can explain to you if you do, if you have not got it can somebody explain it to me come on my dear sisters what do you understand by this scripture what do you understand by matthew chapter 25 verse number 40 come on there's no wrong answer there's no right answer um so what i understand from it is uh, just like how we will treat others is how we'll be treating jesus Okay, Consuela, I want you to focus. I'm going to give you a hint. Okay. Can we can we look at that scripture in chat? Is it on chat? Is that scripture on chat? Can we put it on chat? Yeah. Let's put it on chat so that we can understand it better. Okay. Let me put it on the on the screen then. Let me do a screen share. Just a second. Just a second. Just a second. Thank you, Jesus. It's in the chat, brother. Okay, it's in the chat. Okay. Okay, in the chat it says, "And the king will answer them." Truly, I tell you, just as you did it. to one of the least of these who are my members of my family you did it to me i want you to focus on this on these words when you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family members of my family could refer to those who are born again who believe in jesus ah absolutely absolutely um uh, consuela what does jesus say when you did it to the least of my brethren in some script some bible version it says what you did to the least of my brethren what you did to the least of those who belong to my family who belongs to the family of jesus those who belongs to the family of jesus again. born again christians only those who are born again only those who have accepted christ so when you belong to christ are you all in one family yes if you belong to that one family are you having the same father in heaven yes so if we belong to that same heavenly father that god is our father what does it make each one of us come on become brothers and sisters brothers and sisters to one another so we are not giving that title to say somebody i'm calling somebody a brother i'm calling somebody a sister it's not a title like you say mr president mr chairman you know uh, dr so and so or engineer so and so we're not giving somebody a title before when we understand that we belong to the same family with god as our father we are brothers and sisters to one another and the word of god says now we can read that and the king will answer who's this jesus will answer he said truly i tell you just as you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family you did it to me you did it to me you know my dear sisters i'm going to give you a truth today which is going to radically change the way you're going to operate from today onwards Have we ever gone 
and ever sown our seed or ever gone and given money to the poor or given money to some orphanage or given money to the to the home for the aged or given money to some organization or given to somebody to start some business we have given money to somebody so that we can help them alleviate their suffering and pain have we done that yes yes we have all done that now look at this verse again and and listen to it very carefully whatever you did to the least of my brethren if you sowed your seed in a particular place and you never had an opportunity to share the gospel to them are you listening what i'm saying yes you never had the opportunity to share the gospel to them you only put your money there you gave them your time you went and washed their wounds and you did everything for them so that they could have a nice rest and they could watch television did you do anything good for them no oh. i'm asking you my dear sisters because you know what this particular error which i did in my life began to speak to me so much in the last few years because earlier i was taught you know when you have been blessed with something like a bonus or you have got a you know got something in your you should go and share it with somebody who is unfortunate but you know what we did that because we were brought up that way but never ever i ever went there and shared the word with them and shared the gospel with them because i made those people think that i am their source and now they would write me a letter they would send me a post they would send me a christmas card they would send me a easter card they would send me a birthday card they would send me an anniversary card to remind me that it's time for me to again sow my seed in the very place that i had sown are you listening what i'm saying Brother, I have a question here. Yes, Sister Masala. Yeah. Uh, I was sewing in uh, for maintenance of priesthood to give it in pillar for those uh, no boys who were becoming priest. So, uh, but I never sew, gave them the word of God. But I kept sewing. Uh, just a few years, I have, I didn't get a chance to do it. Uh, is that wrong? Is it from the priesthood? <laughs> Marcella, why do you ask me such difficult questions? <laughs> why do you ask me such difficult questions? Okay, I'll tell you instead of answering the question directly. Okay, you know there are some questions you need to have the wisdom of God to answer in a way because even Jesus answered such difficult questions with a parable. Somebody asked him. Somebody came to trap him. You know, and they said to him. is it okay to give taxes to caesar what belongs to caesar gave to caesar so well, that was not the point okay the point was is it okay to pay taxes to caesar okay <laughs> now if jesus answers in that lot yes it's okay to pay taxes to caesar you know what would happen all that crowd that had adored him all that crowd that was following him all that crowd that was with him all that crowd that was mesmerized by him they would have simply turned away they would have said jesus we thought that you are with us this people are taking taxes from us this is a foreign um, occupied uh, regime the romans have come here they are simply torturing us they are simply taking our money away they made us slaves and they are ruling our nation and we are paying taxes to them and you are saying it is good to pay taxes to them so he couldn't answer that you it's good to pay taxes to caesar if he turned around and he says no you can't pay taxes to caesar the crowds would have been very happy because the leader was for us he doesn't want us to pay taxes to caesar what would the sad what would the herodians do what would the what would the pharisees do immediately they would have arrested him and said this man is is stirring up the people to fight against the government is that right hmm Yes. Is that right? Yes. So he, 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 if he has yes. to say yes, you have to pay. He's in trouble. You don't have to pay. He's in trouble. So what does he do? What does he do? He says, "Give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar, and give to God." Before what... he says that, he says, "Show me a coin." And he yeah. asks them, "Who's who's who's head do you see? Who, who's mark do you see on that coin?" Mm -hmm. And they say to him, "Caesar's." And he says, "Give to Caesar what okay. belongs to Caesar." and give to god what belongs to god did he say that yes yes so when he answered that question that way what was he saying 
What was the meaning of that answer? Give to who it belongs to. No, what is the meaning of that answer which he gave? Give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar and give to God what belongs to God. So what was the answer? What was he trying to tell that, that those people? How did he answer that question? What is of earth, then you do whatever is earthly. What is of God, you do what is godly. Like that. No, 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 no. What, what is the meaning of that? What is the meaning of give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar? So what are you going to give Caesar what belongs to Caesar? And what are you going to, going to give God what belongs to God? Come on. We have heard this gospel so many times. I've shared it in my own Bible class. It's those of you who have been coming every day. There should be an answer because we are not listening, because we are not taking it in. We don't have an answer. It has already been explained. Anybody in this class can explain to me. Anybody. Come on. Come on, my dear sister. God is our source. All things come from him. So finally, whatever. No, no, before we come to God, what is the meaning of give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar and give to God what belongs to God? We have to pay because, because my sister Marcella, your answer, what you did is in this question. That's why I brought this question to you. Thank you, Holy Spirit. What? Yes, Sister Joyce. Go ahead, Sister Joyce. Yeah. Earthly things give to Earthly things give to whom? To the people here. Over no, 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 my question. The, earth. the answer that Jesus gave, he said, know, give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar and give to God what belongs to God. So there it are two people we have to give. We have to give to Caesar and we have to give to God. What is that we have to give to Caesar? What is that we have to give to God? Money. Money to Caesar and blessings. What we receive from uh, Caesar, we give it to him back as taxes. And what we receive from God, we give it. We get uh, spiritual nourishment from God. What is it, sister? Oh, sister Joyce, you, you, you started off and I thought you couldn't finish it. Okay, one second, Sister Marcella. Sister Joyce, tell me what did you say? Yeah, I said on earth, what is, what is over here? Earthly things, we can give it back to them. But what no, is coming from above? Caesar. What do we give we, Caesar what belongs to Caesar and we give to God what belongs to God? We so give the money. First. Money belongs to him and the blessings come from God. No, no, no. Something first like that. First to answer fully about Caesar, sister. Don't come to God later. First tell me about Caesar. What are you going to give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar? All the money. Taxes. Taxes. Okay. So taxes belong to Caesar, you have to follow the, the rules of the, of, the, of the land. There are taxes to be paid. That was a that was an occupied um, a force. The Romans were occupying the land of Israel and therefore they were they had imposed taxes on the people of Israel. So giving back to Caesar was simply paying the taxes that were applicable according to that regime back to Caesar. So there was money involved and he had to give the money back to Caesar. They had to pay the taxes to Caesar. That's why God, Jesus said, I mean, you don't stop paying the, the taxes. So he was very well clear saying, what belongs to Caesar, give to Caesar. This money belongs to Caesar. This is the, this is the, this is the symbol of Caesar on that coin. So you give it back to him, which is your taxes. What did he say? Give to God what belongs to God. What is that meaning of that? Tithes. Come on. Tithes. Are you in the old covenant, Sister Maria? Resources come from God. So we give, give back to God what we receive. Sister Maria, okay, now Sister Maria has got into this discussion. Sister Maria, joyful, please come. Please come. Saving souls. Sister Maria? Okay, you can't talk. Okay. What is the meaning of give back to God what belongs to God? Is it money? Is it a tithes? Is it a love offering? What are you giving back to God? Come on, my bringing dear sisters. Souls. Sorry? Bringing souls to your brother. Bringing, bringing souls bringing to your souls to God. When we sow the seed, no. When we sow Maria them. has finally put okay. something beautiful there. Service. See, our, we, our, see, listen to this. We owe our very life to God. You know, when Jesus died on the cross for us to save us from hell, he canceled hell for us. 
and he opened heaven for us because the moment he took our place on the cross, he now became a substitute for us. Did he? Did yes. Jesus become a substitute on the cross? Yes, yes brother. Yes, did yes, he yes. just give us, did he just give it with gold or silver? No. Did he, what did he what did he what did he offer himself? What did he offer for him for our salvation? His blood, his body. He blood. offered his very life. He offered Sacrifice. himself completely, right? Yeah. Yes. If Jesus offered his life for us on the cross, what must I give back to God? Life. It's my God. very own life. Yes. It's not just my service, it's my time, my talent, my money, my resources. My, my everything belongs to the Lord because I owe everything to him. And you know, when you need to give back to God what belongs to God, God owes, he, he owns us. He has, we have been purchased by the blood of Jesus. That's what the word God says. St. Paul says, we have been redeemed by the blood of, he has purchased us not by silver and gold. He has purchased us with the blood of the lamb. He has purchased us with the blood of his son, Jesus. And you know, my sister and brothers, if you understand how it is to happen before, they used to redeem somebody by, by blood. There should be blood. There should be a blood covenant. Jesus made a covenant with us with his own blood. And therefore, we need to shed our blood, not, not the physical blood, but we need to offer a complete life to God. Our whole life belongs to God. When you understand the day Christ paid for us, you know, we will not come and give our crumbs to the Lord. We will not come and give our coins to the Lord. We will not put our coins into the, into the to offer the Lord. We will not come and give our leftover time to the Lord. We will not come and give, you know, the Lord, um, you know, something which is, which is absolutely third rate. We'll come prepared. We will prepare ourselves. We will, every moment that we want to give ourselves, we'll give him the best that we can offer him because we are offering it our best to the Lord. We are giving him, you know, you know, my sister and brother, let me just tell you one thing. When you understand what has been paid to purchase us by, with, with the blood of Jesus, you will never come to the Lord with your leftovers. You will not think that you are doing a favor to the Lord by going to Bible class or you're coming to some uh, to listen to some word of God or you're going to pray to the Lord. You're not doing a favor. You are simply responding to the love that you have received from the, from the, from the Father through the blood of Jesus because the love of God has been poured into our heart and then we have received that love what we are going to give back is only love. Are you with me, my dear sisters? Only when you have received the love of God, you can only give love back. You can only give to somebody what you have received. Otherwise, rest of it is only going to be some fake. It's only going to be like, like we'll put a mask and we'll try to be actors in front of them. But you know, we can act before the Lord, but in front of the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings, we just can't fool around with him because he knows our hearts. He knows this heart, whether it is seeking him with all our heart or we are seeking him just for a short while to get our miracle. How many of us are seeking the Lord in the beginning when we came to the Lord only to get our miracle? Probably we want you know, to get that job. We want to get our marriage fixed. We want you know, something good to happen in our life. And therefore we are coming to some place to get a fix, like an opium, you know, like a druggie who takes that one, one puff so that you know, he feels high. How many times we are coming with that intention to the Lord or are we coming to him because I've experienced his love. I've experienced that redemption. I've experienced that freedom. I've experienced that joy. I've experienced that peace. I've experienced something that this world could never give me, but I've experienced it in Christ Jesus. And therefore, now that I've experienced it, now that I've received it, I'm just going to give everything because the Holy Spirit is going to be the one who's going to direct me. Remember, I'm not going to be ruling my life. The Holy Spirit is going to rule my life. And therefore, I need to give back to God, not what I feel like doing, what everybody is doing, what the announcement is being made, but what the Holy Spirit directs me to do. Because when I do what the Holy Spirit directs me, I know for sure that I'm giving back to God what belongs to God. I said I'm giving back to God what belongs to God because the Holy Spirit is directing me to give back to God what belongs to God. Sister Marcella, did you get your answer? Yes, 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 I got it. Because Thank I'm you. not going to answer that question directly. It will be like, you know, a big time bomb. So I think the Holy Spirit is good enough sometimes not to answer question directly, but to explain it and you can discern it and know exactly whether to do the right thing or to do the wrong thing or whether to do anything, whatever. If the Holy Spirit directs you, 
you are no more wrong in that. But when you have done it because th there's an appeal made or because you know you have to get somebody to go there and do something, please don't be ruled by your flesh. Let the Holy Spirit rule. And when the Holy Spirit leads you, you will experience that peace. You will never ask the question, am I doing the right thing? Did I do the right thing? Was I, was I really, uh, is that okay? Do, do you think that I, what I did was right? You know, my dear sister, I'm not the Holy Spirit. You have the Holy Spirit in you. He will no. direct you to do the right thing. And when you do the right thing, I tell you, you will experience the peace that will come only from the Lord. The peace of God will come upon you. Then I asked the question because you said you have to give the word of God. There, there I got a little. But the reason why is to give is because my it's in a in a family that we continue from beginning. Dad was giving, we all brother and sister give. So it is uh, not it is just uh, value taught to us. Ah, I like to hear that word. It's a value taught to us. You know, my dear sister, Sister Masella, do you yes. know? There are a lot of good values that are taught to us. But now when we come to the Lord, let's keep those values on the back burner and let the Holy Spirit rule our life. You will never go wrong. You know, we were taught good values. You know what good values we were told? On your birthday, go to church. On an on a, on a obligation, we go to church. When it comes to your birthday, please go and give a cake to the poor. When you when 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 you comes to an occasion like your wedding anniversary, happy birthday, just go to the poor and give them some food to eat so that they will all pray for you. These are all the values, good values that were taught. And as I grew up, I began to do what the values told. Till one fine day, I realized and the Holy Spirit said, did I tell you to do that? Does my decision go based on needs or does it go based on my direction to you? Just because you saw somebody on the streets hungry, you're going to put your hand in your pocket and give it? Sister? Yeah, and I got Just it. Just because you saw somebody coming to you and putting your hands out to you because they made an appeal to you, you're going to give? Did the Holy Spirit direct you? That answer only we can give when the Holy Spirit directs us. And you know, my dear sister, Marcella, and all my sisters who are listening, remember one thing. If we really have a relationship with the Lord and we're having a relationship with the Holy Spirit, he talks to us more louder than I'm talking to you right now. He will direct our life. He will direct our life so beautifully that every action and every service that we do, or everything that we put our hand in our pocket or whether we give our time or energy, it will always be directed by the Holy Spirit. And you know what will happen when we do it under, under the direction of the Holy Spirit? The first and foremost you will never have a doubt whether to do it or not to do it. When the Holy Spirit says do it, you simply do it. You don't ask questions. But once you do it and you get this doubt, then it was definitely not of the Holy Spirit. When the Holy Spirit directs us, he will never bring confusion. It will be so crystal clear. And therefore, whatever values or whatever we have been doing in our lives so far, instead of doing what we have learned, let us unlearn those things and let us come to the word and let's come to the Holy Spirit and let the Holy Spirit tell us and once he tells us, let's, let's just obey the word. And when we obey the word, you'll hear the king say to us, whatever you did to the least of my brethren, you did it to me. Whatever you did to the least of my So remember, whenever you put your place anywhere, if you can get the truth across there, you can share the word there because you know the truth. Remember, not every place there is the truth being shared. Don't you think that in the church everywhere the truth is being shared? You know, you will go to a place and eat a McDonald's or a, or a Kentucky Fried Chicken because you want to go there again and again because the meal is good. But nowadays we are going to places just because we want to fulfill an obligation. Are you being fed there? Are you really growing there? Or are you just going to do religion there? If you are really going to a place, let that place not make you into that same fish that you were 20 years ago. I hope you have become into a big kingfish because you're being fed there. You're growing in the word. If you're not growing in the word, better ask the Holy Spirit to lead you to a place, to the church, which will direct you to a place where from a small little tiny fish, you'll grow into a big fish. Like just like my sister Maria just made that comment a short time ago. Big fish! Big fish! We are in the process of becoming big fish in the kingdom of God because we are being nourished and fed by the spiritual food of the word of God. 
Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. I hope that is a very clear message to all of us because remember, if you are going to be fed with philosophy and doctrines which have got no implication for your life, it's never going to change your life. You're just going to listen to all that stuff. It's high time we go and go to the word. We go back to the manual. The manual has been kept on the back burner. Philosophy and theories have got so much into the world today, just like it happened during the time of Jesus. The word of God has been made of no effect. And as a result, nobody is growing. We are just doing religion. And on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ, I'm sure there are going to be a lot of surprises. But praise God, you have all come to the word. Don't you ever quit because this word that you are getting fed, if you do it sincerely, if you really make yourself available and with his ability, he's going to take us on an awesome journey that we are going to be the big fish of the kingdom and we are going to go into the deep waters and get also the big fish because those big fish that you're going to catch are also going to make bigger fish so that the kingdom of God can spread and we can bring brothers and sisters into the kingdom. We can bring them into the family of God. Amen? Amen. We got it. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Thank Jesus. You, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank, Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. And so I, 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 I would, I would, I would um, plead with you, my dear sisters. Today you have heard the word. Let this word not just be like you heard it right now. If it has stirred you up, I want you to go back to the word. I want you to go back to the basics. I want you to go back to the manual. I want you to see it yourself. Don't take it from me. Take it from the word itself. Let the Holy Spirit speak this word to you because Eve got it from Adam. And you know what happened when Eve got it from Adam? She had a doubt in her mind. She thought she got it secondhand and she got tempted by the devil and she lost it all. But the day she understood it, it was too late. She was already deceived by the devil and she lost it all big time in the Garden of Eden. Let us not lose our eternity getting deceived by the lies of the enemy, getting deceived by religion. Let's go to the word. Let's go to the Holy Spirit. He'll take us on an awesome journey. And I tell you, when he takes us on an awesome journey, you will be used by the Lord to bring others into the family. You will be used by the Lord with whatever you do, whether you're working, whether you're teaching, whether you're shopping, whether you are at the bus stop also. He will use you mightily in order to bring other fish into the kingdom. And that's the time you'll hear the Lord say, Whatever you did to the least of my brethren, because you gave them the word of life, you brought them into the kingdom, you brought them into my family. That is the time I will, you did it to me. And when you did it to me, I'm going to reward you for all that you did. Not just for any Tom, Dick and Harry, but because you did it so that you wanted to bring with good motive to save that soul and bring them into the family of God. Are you with me so far? Yes, yes, yes. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank, you, Thank Jesus. you, Jesus. We just got a bit tangential with the question, but I think I'm not going to take it beyond this because you know what? We'll continue next time. There was much more to learn, but praise God, when we come back the next time, my dear sisters, we're going to go deeper into the subject on the challenges that we will face. Remember when the king comes, he's going to come. We all have to stand before him. But those of us who belong to him, there'll be no questions asked. Just go straight, pass, pass. Pass, pass, because we already passed the test here on earth. When he comes, he'll just say, go ahead. I've got to see you later. I'm going to just see everybody else. Then the, those who do not know him, he'll say, I don't even know you. I don't even know you. They will say, oh, we went to church. We prayed. We did all that fasting. We gave so much to the poor. We went to so much of the home for the agent. He said, I don't even know you. What did you do? I don't even know you. And that's why it's important, my dear sisters, to have first a relationship with the word and the Holy Spirit. And when the Holy Spirit directs us, we can be sure to hear those beautiful golden words. Well done, good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of your master. Well done, good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of your master. And that's what we all want to hear because that's all our life about. Doing what the master wants us to do. Doing the will of him in spite of all the difficulties that we need to do that. Amen? Praise God. Father in heaven, we thank you and praise you for giving us the understanding of your word. Lord, we are going to face challenges. We are going to face problems. We are going to face trials. We are going to face everything while we walk on this earth. But when we understand that we have you with us, when we have you, the creator of heaven and earth, we know and we know 
that we are not going to be bogged down. We are not going to be stopped by all those impediments and blocks that come away because our focus is on the eternal. We are looking at that eternal reward that you have kept for us. And Lord, when we understand this truth and we live our life trying to, doing, fulfilling the purpose you have put us for, we receive that grace, we receive that wisdom, we receive the direction, we receive everything that you need to give us in order to fulfill our purpose in our life. And in spite of the persecution and difficulties, we will always be able to endure, be able to overcome and reach the finishing line where we'll hear the beautiful words that you want us to hear. Well done, good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of your master. And for all this, Father, we thank you and praise you in the glorious and mighty name of Jesus. Amen.